Welcome back to another recap for Friday. This is November 1st, 2024. It's 8.15 a.m. Eastern. So after that big drop yesterday, the futures have tried to climb overnight. They're at 571.43 currently, which means it puts them in the middle of this zone right now. But we've got an hour and 15 minutes or so until the market opens. And we have other things going on. Some data releases. So numbers coming out at 8.30 and 10 o'clock. So several things happening could move the market a little bit, especially after what they did yesterday. Now, conventional wisdom says that uh, they're weak and they're going to go down lower. They're going to fall lower, and that's probably true, but there's a very important support area down here. They've got to get through this, this area from yesterday, which proved to be important. If they get above that, well, they've got some overhead resistance. And yes, there's not a lot of levels and zones on the board today. 11.30 a.m. or noon, not likely I'm going to be very active in the market. Uh, myself, at least. You're welcome to do what you want. But this is what we have on the board today. And as you know, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to discuss any trades that may have resulted from the SPY hitting these levels. These are trades in the E-mini futures, of course. So we'll catch you on the other side. It is now about 8.30 p.m. So they did retrace a lot of that down move from yesterday. And price launched from this zone. Then it came back later. While not really reaching this level here, I've already adjusted at 575.68 as adjusted with a five cent buffer toward price. Uh, that was too bad because this would have been a pretty nice short trade up here. So were there any trades available today based off of the levels? Yes, at least one over here when they came back into the zone. But let's talk about the first uh, level here, or the first zone. So after 945, after that 15 minute window had opened, the price was above this zone. So per the rules, no trade would have happened early on. I will say, though, that if you were aware of what usually happens in the futures after a drop like yesterday, and specifically the futures overnight typically, you could have anticipated that they would climb a bit today and retrace the move. So since things looked bullish at this point, once they got above this zone, you could have jumped on board when they got here and, you know, with the expectation that momentum would continue. Not to get too ahead of myself, but I took a chance way before the opening bell and bought some E-mini contracts during the overnight session and rode this wave up. I did not mention it in the morning video, but I was already well into the money before the opening bell. I thought I would save that discussion for the post-market part of this recap, so more on that later. But assuming you stuck to the rules and left everything else alone, would you have jumped into a long position when price got into this zone here? You certainly could have. Even with this first attempt here, when they kind of came up close, if you bought at the top of the zone, you could have pulled a base hit. Now, this is not a near miss. For one thing, let's see the low here was 572.15, and I don't adjust zones, and really it's like one fat level. So if you just treated this like we treat every single zone in the tracking log, you just bought at each extreme, it would have given you a base hit on your combined position eventually if you waited it out. I was not participating in the market at this time, so I can only tell you what I think I would have done, but it's worth pointing out that if you did buy ES contracts the moment they came into 572.08 at about 1.37 p.m. or so, they might have given you what I call a near miss of the profit objective. They came up like a penny short of 40 cents here in the SPY. So an E-mini trade may have given you the required four-point base hit there, or maybe it would have missed it by a tick and pulled back. If that happened to me, I'd probably jump out of the trade, my break-even point on that part of the trade, and then wait for the other level lower down, or just buy in the middle and scale in. Like I said, don't forget this whole zone is really one big level. So if you look at zones that way, it kind of can help you manage your trades better. To keep the play-in by the rules tracking log accurate, we're going to assume that you bought the same number of ES contracts at each level of this zone. The top one was a close call. Not sure if you would have pulled a base hit, but the lower one definitely worked as designed. And if you averaged in, you would have had a base hit after 30 or 40 minutes or so. So I'm going to code this one just one official base hit per the rules. Anybody out there on my email list who had these levels before the morning bell, were you able to pull any more points? I'm just curious if you want to weigh in. So let's talk about my redemption trade. As you might imagine, I wasn't too enthralled about giving back almost 25 points to the market yesterday. So I kept an eye on things in the overnight session. I really wanted to see them go all the way down and hit that area around SPY 567.80, lower part of the zone today. Uh, this recording is in real time. I might as well go ahead and start playing this. So you'll probably see that limit order in that area at the bottom of this trade. I'll just move this clock out of the way. There it is right there. And I was just taking this off after a while because at this point, after I'd wrapped up the morning video and took care of Thursday's video because I was behind on that one, I started recording this where I was at the pre-market. I'd already 
scaled in four contracts as they were coming back out of this. It had been several hours at this point. And I was in the money about 15 points when I started this recording. So I'm going to scrub ahead here and show you when I got the first part of this contract or this trade in the bag. So you can see the three contracts. I'm ready to sell those up at 57.72. And so I took that profit. So that was nice because I was able to wash out the loss from yesterday. Then I added a 20-point trailer on the remaining contract. So this kind of gave me time to see what the 10 o'clock uh, data release was going to do. I'm going to scrub ahead to about 10. Moved around a little bit. And so right after 10 o'clock, maybe 10 or 2 or so, I'm in a trade. I can't lose. I mean, the worst is going to happen. They're going to come back and stop me out. So almost $500 at this point. But I closed up shop and headed into the office. So when I opened up again, worked there for a few hours today, this jumps ahead into the future about 30 minutes or so. So 10.02, there we go. So now it's 10.36. Let me back up because this happens pretty fast. It's part of the reason I kept this in real time. So you can see I'm. they're up at this point here. They're, they're starting to stall out under this level. And I kind of made a decision, you know, in case this is going to provide early resistance and they're going to pull back, I just want to go ahead and get out. So you'll see me uh, put a limit order here just to kind of get out. They start dropping. I cancel that and just hit close. So you'll see everything disappear at around $2,200 or so at that point. I'm just going to let this go because it happens pretty fast and I didn't want to speed this thing up. Uh, so it's more clear this way you can see it. That disappears right there, which you just saw. That's when the order was closed. So that's all I needed for the day. I just let this one go until about 1130 or just let this recording go. I made the decision not to make any more trades. All my levels are dotted. So by the time they got down into the zone here, I was away from my screens and not interested in participating. It was nice to clear out that loss from yesterday and then add a couple grand on top of that. Good way to end the week. Speaking of week, let's look at the weekly chart since... It's the end of the week, and maybe we can look at the monthly chart as well because October is finished. So we've talked about this area a little lower that at, would have acted as support. Still could be supportive if they come down farther. But this is kind of starting the pullback that we talked about could happen. They're on time on this weekly chart. And then on the daily, it's pretty easy to see the bounce uh, retraced almost all of that. Well, not, retraced basically half of the entire move from the last two days. Just look at a few more time frames. This is a four hour chart bouncing off your 100. Three hour chart got below the 100. Two hour chart, they're kind of hanging out on top of its 200. And they look pretty weak on the hourly chart. Just showing you a few more things. Don't really need the commentary. Just want to show you where price is as we drill into smaller time zones, smaller time frames, I should say. And then let's just come all the way back out and look at a monthly chart. And let's talk about where they're at. So on their way up, let's go all the way back to this point here. This is back in 2022, October of 2022. So this is exactly two years ago. Every time they've had a pullback, it's been on time. And where we're at now, based on the number of months, the timing it's taken them to get there, it's, it would not be surprising for them to pull back. And they could pull back quite a bit. I mean, just look at where the 20 period moving average is. They could pull back all the way to, you know, here, Anywhere down here to where the 20 period is, they'd have to come down pretty fast and meet it where it's at. So, so 20 period is going to be moving up as price comes down or goes sideways. So I go move down to below 530 or so. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just pointing out that they're pretty far extended. Um, anyway, that, that wouldn't be too out of the question. It would take some time. This is a monthly chart. So it could take several more months for that to happen. Or they could just go sideways. But we're just going to pay attention to smaller time frames to see if we start seeing things add up. Right now, everything is bullish on the larger time frames and little weak on the shorter time frames, which is, is not unusual when you have a big drop like that. But where they're at is a good time and a good place for them to pull back even more from this point. On the tracking logs, here's the first one playing by the rules. You can read the notes. The first level at uh, 572.08 and level four here was a wash, if we're going to you know, be strict about it. And then only the lower part of that zone counted for a base hit. So there's your four points. You can take a look at everything, including the total Rate of return, which is the new metric here. And my trade was really not any of these levels. It was done way before they got up to this point. Can't even tell you what the level was. I just jumped in at certain points hours before the opening bell and it paid off and it ended up being a 25.94 points because it was exactly 51.87.50 before commissions. So that's a wrap for this recap. If you found it helpful and learned anything, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel 
and turn on the notifications and all of that. If you're interested in learning more about this strategy that I use or want to trade the levels alongside me each day, you can find more information below. Feel free to leave a comment. If you have questions or thoughts on what we're doing here, I always appreciate hearing from you and discussing the market. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on Monday with new levels and another game plan. Have a great rest of your day.